the title of your book would imply that you do not believe or think that 6.9 percent growth GDP is what we're really seeing in China. What do you think? Isn't it amazing that every quarterly period, you know, the numbers out of National Bureau of Statistics are always exceeding people's estimates. You know, when you look at electricity production for the quarter, it was up 1.0 percent. And when you consider that traditionally growth of GDP is about 85 percent of the growth of electricity, we're looking at a 1 or 2 percent economy, not clearly at the 7 percent, 6.9 that they're talking about. One or two percent, that, I mean, that's still growth, but in China terms, that would be equivalent to recession. It, it certainly would be, um, you know, because traditionally growth has been much higher. You know, if you go back to 2010 when they reported 10.4, it probably was much greater than the 10.4 than they reported. You know, they smooth out the earnings. And so basically what they're doing right now is they are over-reporting growth. Having said that, it's fairly significant, even with China engineering the numbers, that they're willing to go to a six handle for GDP. What does that mean to you? Well, it's a psychological barrier that has been broken. It's pretty much like when they broke through from eight to seven. Uh, but nonetheless, they are not willing to really talk about where they are right now. And we saw so many adverse um, developments during Q3. For instance, you know, Bloomberg reported that stock index futures, you know, the volume was down 99 percent. But nonetheless, their services income, they said, was 8.4 percent in the quarter, just like it was in the first half. That's not possible when your financial services industry has been devastated the way that it was when they tried to keep stock prices up and volumes fell. Uh, clearly, this is just it's inconsistent. You cannot reconcile these numbers. Uh, nevertheless, though, when you sort of take a look at electricity consumption, uh, why is that the right metric? Because it seems like if China is transitioning from uh, an investment-driven economy to consumption, electricity consumption would matter a lot less. And things like tax revenue, for example, which was up about 4.5% year-on-year in the last nine months, would be maybe more relevant. Sure, but we don't really know that tax number either. But you know, the point is that, though, isn't it? Yeah, I mean... The the point is, though, I think, you know, you're right. You know, when you look at electricity, people say, well, look, because they're transitioning to a services economy, electricity is less. But look at their industrial output numbers. They were up 5.9 percent. You can't reconcile that with all of the purchasing managers index, the PPI, and, of course, electricity. These numbers don't work. So on some level, we've got to recognize that there is a wide variation between the way the Chinese economy actually performed and these numbers. And by the way, services do require electricity. So, To be fair, obviously, yeah. turn on the lights if you want to sell some clothes, right? But, but to go back to the chart that I had up with the tax revenue, I mean, that is growing. The idea is that it's harder to fudge that because it's actual little, literal revenue they're getting from the people to the government. So when you look at a chart like this, what does that tell you? Well. If tax revenue was going up, that's important. And we don't know whether they're just better at enforcement or mm -hmm. whether there really is more activity. Now, they've been getting better at tax enforcement because of a number of things that they've been doing over the last couple of years. And, you know, that is one sign. But there are so many other signs that really point in the other direction. And that really is the problem, that there are too much discordant information, really, when you start to really parse through all of this. You know, if they were growing at 6.9, why would they need to devalue the currency? Why would they need to increase fiscal stimulus? Why would money be coming out of this country, as Bloomberg said, at $141 billion in August? These are numbers that you just can't. And you look at them and you say, what's going on here? So you look at it and you wonder what's going on. At the same time, the government is doing something right. You need to concede at that point, whether it's the tax revenue or something else. What are you encouraged by when you see what's going on in China? Well, obviously what you are seeing is that manufacturing is becoming less important. But in the sense, um, because consumption is, is maybe growing, but not growing the way people think, what's happening is that investment in manufacturing is shrinking. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, just as a matter of arithmetic, the rest of the economy is growing bigger as a percentage. But when you start to look at absolute numbers, you know, especially when we looked at Q2 results from companies um, that have on the consumer product business, both Chinese and foreign, they showed a very different story from what people have been saying in terms of consumption in China. Yes, it might be growing as an absolute number, but not very much, um, I think. And we saw that, of course, with Yum and yes. uh, its uh, Pizza Hut brand, actually. Uh, okay, so let's just say that they are growing at 1 to 2% and take your GDP forecast. 
it wouldn't seem that the global economy can actually handle that kind of growth. So yeah. why do we even care if it's growing at 7 or 1% if the global economy is still living and we're still breathing and everything's yeah. okay? You know, for the last couple of years, we've been living with very low Chinese growth in, in actuality. Uh, the other thing, though, I think the reason why we do care, it's, it's not so much the number of any one particular quarter that should really concern us. It's the trajectory of this economy. Mm -hmm. And despite everything that they've been doing in Beijing, this economy is heading downwards. The only thing they really can do is slow the pace of descent. And they've done a little bit of that through margin. So, for instance, reducing interest rates, I think, has had a minimal effect, but not very much. There have been, you know, four reduction, five reductions in the benchmark interest rates since November, four reductions in the reserve requirement ratio, and not very much effect in the economy. That's the real problem. They cannot change direction. And that means whether it's one or two this week, it's going to be one or two in a month or two from now just because of the way this economy is moving. So does that mean more currency devaluation as a result? Probably. Um, you know, people have been talking about 10 percent devaluation. This is all political in terms of what Beijing is willing to do. We saw Beijing spend $20 billion a day defending their currency in August and the first part of September. So, you know, clearly they can put this currency at any place they really want. But I think at some point, as you, you suggest, they're going to have to let the currency come down because they don't have the money to defend it. Because when they defend this currency, they are using dollars or yeah. euros. You know, they can intervene in the stock market with their own currency, but when it comes to the renminbi, they've got to use dollars. Mm -hmm.